Well, good morning, everyone. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline. Today is Monday morning and I am about to head out. It is 10 after eight. How to look at the clock. No idea what time it is. So today I'm just hitting the road. I'm going thrifting. Surprise, surprise. I go thrifting probably, I'm gonna say two to four days a week. And while I'm at thrifting, I also hunt for new places to source from. So today that's what I'm doing. I'm probably gonna head north. Now I will hit Goodwill 30. That is my normal stomping ground. Is that a bad word, stomping ground? What does that even mean? I'm not sure. All right, you can tell it's Monday morning, all the things in the head. I got all of my shipping out last night and this morning, really good sales weekend, mostly bread and butter. I don't think there was any real noteworthy woohoo type of items, but a real good solid weekend, very grateful. And it's all piled up by my front door for my postman. All right, so I'm just gonna pack my lunch. We're gonna hit the road. I'm gonna bring you along with me. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go thrifting. As you can tell, we have finally gotten out of the house. It took me quite a while this morning. Some mornings I am like a pack mule. I need so many things in my bag. It's crazy. I always need the normal stuff, you know, the camera, the battery, the chip, uh, my lunch, reading glasses, sunglasses, all the things. But I am finally out of the house and on the road going to the first Goodwill. And yeah, I'm gonna see what the day brings. Sometimes I have no idea where I'm gonna wind up, which is just fine. That's one of the things I love about this job is it's very flexible and very changing all the time. I think I would be crazy if I had to work in the same office day in, day out, year in, year out. I, I just wouldn't be able to do that. So we are on the road and what else? I might meet up with Roger and do thrifting with him. He is at his regular job. Roger has a regular job and also sells full time on eBay. To answer a few of your questions, we have been dating about four months now. It is going really well. A few of you have left comments of like, why isn't he on the channel? What's his eBay name? And I just want to share with you guys, this is my channel. He didn't decide to do YouTube. It wasn't like, you know, he said, hey, I want to be a YouTube creator. So I always respect his privacy as much as I can. Once in a while, I catch him in film to show you guys what we're up to. But as a general um, thing, I don't know that he'll ever be on my channel, which is 100% fine with me. He is super shy and um, he blushes quite easily, which is um, very endearing. Anyway, I had a great time over the weekend. We went to the Penn State game, and while it was super, super cold out, we dressed super warm. We had all of the hand warmers, the back warmers, the feet warmers, all of the things, so we were fine sitting outside, and Penn State won, so that was really exciting. All right, so enough chit-chat. Get yourself a cup of coffee. Let's go thrifting. Hopefully we'll find some really crazy good stuff. In this video, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of what I found. And the next video will be a haul that I will show you pretty much everything I found that's worthy about talking about. All right, let's get started. So here I'm seeing a large bowl. This is the under bowl of one of those pitcher and bowl sets. I generally do not pick those up. I think right now I have one in inventory. Here's something a little bit more manageable in size. This is a little wooden globe and I could hear something shaking inside. So I put the camera down to be pleasantly surprised at these little, I'm gonna call these bean figures. I remember there used to be a toy that the figures were little beans, beans something. Leave a comment down below if you know what I'm talking about. And I pulled these out to find different nations represented. I love this idea. So at $1.99, I put this right in my cart. So here I'm just giving you a glimpse of the red deer and a box of goodies. This is Reed and Barton. And this beautiful vase is Jasper Keramik, Keramik, if I remember correctly, K-E-R-A-M-I-K, that's West Germany. The Reed and Barton is beautiful. I generally don't pick this up. This is the 6710 uh, Victoria. 
pattern. So I know that can bring good money. I don't have the under tray, but I went ahead and picked it up anyway. So this was cart number one, all topped off with a big giant red glossy deer. I did show that in my Instagram. <laughs> you guys all loved it. I do too. I will be selling him local. Here I'm zooming in on two glass boots. I think these are probably little vases or used for toothpicks. These are Fenton, I believe the diamond pattern. I don't know, I just wasn't feeling them. I feel like they could bring maybe between five and seven dollars. I know the hobnail ones can bring good money and a few of the older ones, but as a general rule, I don't pick those up. Here this graphic just caught my attention. Very vintage, very 90s, very fun. Here I'm seeing this urn or fountain. Now I figured this probably was Italy, did have a funny mark on it, very heavy. $4.99 is a good price and this might have sold, but I really didn't want to deal with such a heavy breakable piece, famous last words, at this point. So I do leave that on the shelf. I see quite a few of these impressed glass figures. Quite often the employees are clearing the shelves and putting new out. There is no shortage of inventory here. These Nantucket cups always fool me for a minute. I always think they're fiesta wear. Colors are very similar. And this advent wooden calendar thing with the little drawers was adorable with number 18 missing, and I thought this might have been Lillian Vernon, but it is Ashland. If it was Lillian Vernon, I would have picked this up. And I don't know, for some reason, I just needed to put this Santa up front. I thought he was cute and somebody should buy him, but it wasn't me. <laughs> okay, this black vase was a mystery to me. I think this is the poinsettia pattern I didn't know who the maker was on this, and maybe that was a mistake that I left it behind. At first, I thought it was ceramic or porcelain, but it was black glass. So probably a mistake on my part to leave it there. I remember years ago, I had an iron pan that I would make cornbread in little corn-shaped uh, loaves. That was very fun. So those pans always attract my attention. A fairly large lot of teacups came into the store and I was finding teacups everywhere. Now I still will do teacups, but it has to be a set of four or six very old and very pristine for me to deal with something so fragile. This was the day of like me feeling fooled. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a pretty angel. I'm not quite sure what happened to that angel. I... So quite a few pieces I looked at made me think of other things. Does that ever happen to you? You go into the store and you see something and you think it's one thing and it's another. This was the day of that. There was a lot to look at. That last vase definitely wasn't Capodimonte. I thought these were Martha Stewart. It looks like her green, but they were not. They were Portugal, Pottery Barn. Very heavy, two cups. I'm leaving them behind. I guess this was a red pear. I thought maybe it was a strawberry. Am I missing what fruit that is? It looks like a pear to me. Now this candy dish wasn't marked, but this just shouts Christmas to me and I picked this up. I mean, it could be a brand, I don't know. I don't know my glass, so I'm not gonna even pretend to know. Here's a little shot of this cart this is my second cart, I think. These brown bowls, if you see these, these are Melamac. They are Boonton Ware, 
and they are the confetti swirl pattern, I think. Those bowls are vintage, can bring very good money. Here I'm just moving some bowl caps that I put in my cart for a little while to show you this beautiful deer plate. At first I thought this was Ned Foltz or Eldrith, but it's not, it's Steve Nutt. And I believe he's originally from Staten Island and then had a pottery studio in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure if they're still producing, but I love that plate. And now we are on to the White Isle. White is my least favorite right after clear, but I still make myself go up and down the aisle. <laughs> I'm always looking for that treasure. I thought I found it with this little vase, handmade. I thought that was sweet. A little jug maybe, but I did leave that behind. I didn't feel the profit capability was worth my time. I'm really trying to zero in on that. Okay, the store is so crowded. I am really trying to hold my camera down. So next I spotted this box of dishes, very mid-century modern. I thought these were Taylorton. I'd rather have had them have the atomic print. They were unmarked as far as I found. I did look at the underside in quite a few pieces, $7. And I didn't think the print was that spectacular. I do like those colors together for mid-century modern but it was quite heavy and I'm avoiding heavy things as much as I can for shipping. I'm still picking up large items that I feel I can sell local. I thought this fake Starbucks mug was funny. Just because I've stopped picking up a lot of the older china does not mean I don't look at it. So this is English Town Crafts Ramble Rose or Rambling Rose. Very shabby chic, which is not the correct term for those. Here I'm spotting a little trinket dish or a trinket box, Fitz and Floyd. Now I realize this one won't bring a lot of money, but I do like the Fitz and Floyd name. I like to find the sculptural ones. The ones that really bring some money are the animal ones, seashell, fruit, very like nature inspired pieces. So here you can see how crowded this is. Here I'm pulling a Galileo uh, thermometer off the shelf. These are just beautiful. I'm looking at the ends to see if there's a loop to hang this with. This must be missing its base or it's, um, I don't know, something that holds it. And this does tell the weather. I think they're fairly accurate, and I have sold quite a few of those. Again, not my favorite thing. It's just like uh, snow globes. When it has water, not my favorite thing to ship. I'm always on the hunt for mycin figurines. I think that's how we say it. Here I'm just showing you a quick snapshot of the blue cart. Okay, like the angel, this snowman had a very scary look in his eyes. <laughs> but I did like the way that he had light up eyes. I would have liked to have seen that lit up. So I'm sure making you dizzy with this vast thrifting and crooked shelf, somehow I'm holding the camera diagonal. Too much going on. So hopefully Lisa can slow this footage down a little bit so we all have a chance to see what I'm looking at, but I like to show you the real way I shop. Always multiple carts, always just really on the move, looking at everything as quickly as I can. Now, if you don't like crowds and a lot of people, you don't wanna to come to this store. This store gets crowded, it's like a bus pulls up. I thought these were interesting. I didn't care for them, but terracotta angels. I don't know that I've ever seen terracotta angels. Now, as you can see, there is quite a bit on the shelves. 
And I always like when you guys leave a comment down below at what time stamp you saw something that you felt was valuable and I should have picked up. So if you're watching this and you said, oh, she missed the such and such, would you leave a comment down below so I can look back at the video and learn from you guys of what I missed, you know, in scouring over these shelves so quickly? Thanks, guys. I don't know that that pottery is, you know, anything spectacular. It could even be Dollar Tree. I kind of like those. I think they're painted and glazed very nicely. Here is a vintage mold piece. I think the Sparkle Noel was added on later, which in my opinion ruined it. And now we have moved on to the Blue Isle. I thought this piece was very well done. I was judging the quality by the handle though, and the handle felt not well done. So probably just a souvenir, you know, for the souvenir market, but I thought the graphic was really pretty. Okay, every little plastic bag I find, I look in. There have been more times I have found gold, silver, I mean, it's just crazy, in little bags. So I'm always sure to look at little bags of items, things that are just grouped together. Pretty sure that's done by the workers in the back. Noticing these tins with roses on them. These are very inexpensive. I'm imagining this is a dollar store, but again, very pretty. I have no problem with picking things up from the dollar store and using it for decoration. I know with the holidays, when I'm entertaining, I do that. And these are really pretty. I don't know why I had a need to organize them, but... <laughs> There's my type A personality, lining them all up. These were interesting. They're made in China, they're contemporary. I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do with those. I guess it's just a figurine. A rabbit sitting on a ball, on a pawn, on a pedestal, on a something, I don't know. Okay, and this piece of pottery, was this the mistake of the day? I look at the bottom. I feel like this is not well done, but I could be wrong. So I'm trying to look at it and figure out the glaze, you know, how much work went into this. Then I see the fake crackled worn look to make it look old. And that's when I feel I should leave it behind, that it's a reproduction. And as you can tell, we are on the green aisle. I looked at this Santa for a few, few minutes. I like the pencil Santas, the really skinny long ones. Here I'm finding a vintage set, quite a large set in a bamboo print. This was unmarked, if I remember correctly. It had the sugar, the creamer, butter dish, some cups, and a pitcher. I don't care for this colorway. So to me, it's very 70s. I'm not a big fan of 70s decor. If we're gonna do vintage decor, I either want mid-century modern. I don't know that I would have the 60s in my house with shag carpet, but I appreciate it. But the 70s, I don't know. Not a big fan of the 70s. Maybe because I grew up in the 70s. Okay, I thought that frog was adorable. I felt like he was peeking out of a pond and unfortunately has a little chipped foot and his pond was really a pumpkin dish. But just the way he was looking at, I had to take a look at him. Okay, I'm back to a diagonal view. I gotta watch more carefully how I hold this little GoPro. I have taken the GoPro off of the tripod, off of the stick, 
the selfie stick and I'm just hand holding the little camera so that I can really try to control not filming too many people, just keeping that camera tight to the shelf as best I can. But I always catch people. It's like a splatterware reproduction or spongeware, I guess. And while I thought these cups were pretty, I didn't feel the quality was there, and I do leave these behind. Porcelain mug. Right away, I'm noticing the bread box. Now, if this was handmade by a local artist, I would have picked this up, but when I open it, I can see the back is particle board and it is a mass-produced piece, so I do leave that behind. But on the bottom shelf, or next to the bottom shelf, the second shelf, is this piece of art. Now, I realize the glass is cracked. This is the big book of animal stories, and it's signed, and I'm looking into if that signature is the artist, and I'm hoping that this piece is one of the original illustrations for the big book of animal stories. So I will report back if that's what happens. I'm going to put this in my cart. Absolutely. At these kind of price points, it's always good to, you know, take a look to see if you can afford to make a mistake. But I am putting this right in my cart and I will just be super careful taking the glass out, throwing away the frame and the matting, but trying to tell if that's an original piece of art. I always love to save things like that, even if it only brings 20 or $30, but you never know, you might get lucky. A couple times I have, where I have found original art and it has brought hundreds of dollars. So I always love to save art. Looking at some uh, curlers or rollers. I thought that dish was sweet. Even though the store was very crowded, shopping was super fun this day. And like I said, I was pushing the big cart with the red deer in it and pulling a cart behind me and everybody was laughing and commenting on the red deer. Here I find this beautiful drinking glass. Now, even though I've made a rule for myself, rules are meant to be broken. I always tell myself no single pieces, no single coffee mugs or, but look how beautiful this is. And when I tapped it, did the tap test, the sound of the glass was just beautiful. In the cart it went. This piece was very unique, $10. It was a musical, sculptural statue thing, all in white. I don't know, I don't get stuff like that. And a wedding candle that has sort of like fallen over. Hopefully the couple is still doing well. So here I'm just reading the shelves back and forth and I come across this little reticulated dish, souvenir of Toronto, Canada. I won't offend your ears with trying to say that in French, but even though that piece won't bring a lot, I still love to save things like that. So pretty, I think that'll do well. And the last item on this shelf are these glasses. I love this base, this green ribbed base to these goblets, very pretty. And I did not run a comp on those because there were only two. I'm ending this video with a view of what my cart looked like. I was pushing this cart and pulling a second one. Not an easy feat in a very crowded Goodwill, but I had a great time. Stay tuned for the video that I'm gonna put out on Sunday. It will be a haul video of everything or pretty much everything I bought this day. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.